Hello everyone, I'm Ann Hamlin and I'm a Professional Development Coordinator uh, at NAU, Northern Arizona University, uh, the Center for Science, Teaching and Learning. I'm a learning expert on the Planets Project and uh, we have a question that came in. So I'm here with Christina Thomas today um, because she's a great person to answer that question. Hi, I'm Dr. Christina Thomas. I'm an assistant professor at NAU and my research specializes in asteroids. Awesome, I'm so glad that you joined us here today and that's that's perfect for our question because our per question is related to OSIRIS-REx, um, which recently went to our the asteroid Bennu. So I was wondering what your role was on o the OSIRIS-REx mission. Well, for a few years, I've been a collaborator on the OSIRIS-REx mission, and in that role, I've primarily been doing some calibration work for one of the spectrometers on the mission. Wow, that's interesting. So what exactly is the spectrometer? What does that do? What does that tell us about the asteroid? Well, OSIRIS-REx actually has two spectrometers with, which look at different wavelengths of light. So very much like a rainbow breaks up the light that we can see into the component colors, uh, there's a lot more uh, wavelengths available to us in the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, and so that extends out for OSIRIS-REx through the infrared wavelengths, which are all the wavelengths that are beyond red. Uh, and so one spectrometer, uh, which is called OVIRS, uh, looks at the visible and the near infrared light, so that closest to red, and another spectrometer, which is called OTIS, looks at the thermal emission, which is in the what we call the thermal infrared, which is farther out away from red um, than the near infrared. Okay, interesting. So what do those wavelengths of light that are measured by the spectrometer, what do they tell us about the asteroid? Well, primarily we're looking for different kind of spectral absorption features, which happen at different wavelengths that tell us a lot about the composition of objects. But the other thing that's very interesting is that by looking at these two different wavelength regions, we're looking at different kinds of signal coming from the object. And so in the visible and near infrared, we're looking at reflected light, which is very much like the light that we see coming off everyday objects. And in the thermal infrared, we're looking at light essentially that's re-radiated. Uh, from the surface. And so that's very much like heating up the asphalt on a hot summer's day and then watching that heat come back off the surface later in the day. And so uh, those two regions together can tell us a lot about the physical properties, the composition uh, and the thermal inertia, how quickly you can heat something up and cool it down of the object's surface. Um, but there is a wavelength region um, where these two properties overlap, where the reflected light and the thermal light overlap and we need to make sure that we can take out this extra thermal radiation over this reflected radiation which is what we really want to see. So you want to see that you want to see the reflected radiation because you want to know what the asteroid is made of? Exactly. Um, when we're looking at a lot of the reflected light components, we're looking for different spectral features that tell us a lot about the composition of the object. And where this thermal radiation is, it's a very interesting wavelength region that can tell us a lot about the chemical composition of things that are uh, interest to us scientifically, like water and organics. Wow, so there might there's water on asteroids? There is water on asteroids. A lot of it is tied up in the chemical composition of the rocks uh, in what we call hydrated silicates, but it, it's there. And it's one of the things that is motivating people to think about the available on these objects. Wow, that's super interesting. Very cool. Okay, um, so our question um, that came in is actually, why do we want to sample an asteroid? 
There's a lot of reasons to sample asteroids. And as an astronomer, one of the primary reasons in my mind is so that we can better understand the solar system overall. I use telescopes to look at asteroids and I'm looking for these very same spectral features. But by bringing samples back, we now have a what we call a ground truth comparison so that we can see it in the laboratory and then study its composition in great detail, take the spectrum of that object, and then also compare it to the spectra that I have of the asteroids that are still out in the asteroid belt. Wow, that is really interesting. The other great part about this is uh, that it really helps us understand the origins of the solar system. And what we're hoping uh, to understand from this sample from Bennu is the origins of life uh, on this planet. Uh, we expect that Bennu can have uh, things like water and organic material somewhere in the surface, which doesn't necessarily mean life, but could be some of the building blocks that led the planet Earth to create life. Whoa, that's interesting. So you're looking at the origins of life, potentially. Yeah, asteroids are really great in that they're essentially telling us what the solar system was like back in its early stages. And so it tells us a lot about how we make planets and how those planets then evolved from that material. Gosh, that is so interesting. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Thomas. I really enjoyed learning about asteroids. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me.